Hi, new VR games, let's go. Nothing major is coming this month, but don't fret, we have a ton of smaller titles and some early access graduates to talk about. If you can't shake that unsettling feeling that you missed last month's video, that is because there was none, let's check what we missed, shall we? The year started with a big thud. The VR port of People Can Fly's Bulletstorm released January 18th on every major VR platform. The port was made by Incuvo, now part of the People Can Fly group, who are best known for the VR port of Green Hell. This time didn't go so well. The game got dumpstered on by pretty much every review outlet, resulting in a week 51 on Open Critic. Road to VR were even more critical than the average reviewer and gave the game a bad 3.5 out of 10. Quote, executing fast and artful skill combos was basically the reason for Bulletstorm to exist in the first place, but sadly the VR version doesn't deliver the same flow state as the original, making it feel more tedious and less fluid overall. Combine that with very iffy visuals which feel demonstrably worse in VR than on flat screen and you have a game that's not only uglier than the original but less fun overall. End quote. On Steam it looks even worse with a 28% mostly negative rating. Hell has no fury like a Steam player scorned. Just a week later an underdog rose to the occasion and took all the acclaim reviewers had to give this month. Underdog is a roguelike first person VR mech pilot brawler that released January 25th on Steam and the Quest, 99% very positive rating on Steam. That's… that's something alright. Not many critics reviews out for this one, but those few that tried it loved it. The VR realm gave it an 87%. I disagree, I would have given it an 87.315% that would have been more accurate. Quote, with the amount of roguelikes now littering the VR space, you have to do something different and special to make your stand out. And Underdogs does this in every aspect. It offers a great experience from the get-go until you are ready to end your runs for the night. With a movement and combat system that feels like second nature in no time, really allowing you to concentrate on the challenge in front of you. All this in a world that is built up perfectly with its sound and visual design. End quote. The beast inside me. I can no longer control it. I will hunt them down and my vengeance will be legendary. Let's cut this one short as the game released just 3 months ago on the PSVR 2 and the Quest and we already talked about it in plenty. Vampire the Masquerade Justice is a Dishonored inspired stealth assassin type game in the World of Darkness universe. Reviews were positive but not amazing mainly due to issues with the VR controls. Let's hope Fast Travel Games were able to resolve those for the Steam release on February 6th. We have much to talk about. Mixture is a small platformer that originally released a year ago on the Quest. It's a mixture of third person platforming with first person interactions as it was established in games like Astrobot Rescue Mission or Moss. This time you play as two distinct characters, the exiled knight Solas, whom you'll control in third person, and the master alchemist Sephiroth. Not Sephiroth, definitely not Sephiroth, whom you'll control in first person. There will be platforming and alchemy and puzzle solving and boss battles. I feel like the game kinda flew under the radar, I certainly missed it and you'll have a hard time finding reviews for it. If you have a PSVR 2, you'll be able to form your own opinion on February 6th. The Steam release is planned for later this year. you on the news. <laughs> they seem to be calling you number one. And this gets us to why you are here. Good morning. It's not yet a full-on robot uprising, but some bots seem to behave oddly. As a result, travel was restricted and border checkpoints implemented. As a human, you are perfectly suited for the job of border agent. Check each robot's papers for discrepancies, oddities or undeclared modifications. Maybe you'll even find contraband. For a job well done, you'll earn credits to upgrade your booth and to customize your home. It's a blend of job simulator and a very lightweight papers please, published by Team17, a further venture into VR after the in-house developed killer frequency. Borderbots is later to release on all major VR platforms on February 8th. Please select the one which most closely aligns with your emotional state.
Dead Hook is a roguelike shooter with a lot of Doom energy. This one has a bit of a history, as the project initially released in Steam Early Access under the name Outlier. There it did not perform to the expectation of developer Joyway, who pulled the title from the stores and scrapped it entirely. Instead, they repurposed some ideas from Outliers into Dead Hook, which then released about half a year ago exclusive to the Quest. The game actually got pretty solid reviews, mainly praised for the intense and fast paced action. It does not reinvent the wheel with the roguelike mechanics, but does a good enough job to make for a satisfying progression. Main critique I have seen is lowish enemy variety and dull boss fights. On February 8th, Dead Hook makes the full circle and comes back to Steam and also the PSVR 2. What if you took a popular and influential flat game like Escape from Tarkov and tried to recreate that concept in VR? The newly formed developer Combat Waffle Studios asked and answered that question. The answer is 10 million dollar in revenue in its first year of early access. Ghosts of Tabor was the last year's surprise success story. Apparently an extraction shooter was exactly the thing the VR community was waiting for. So yeah, it's basically escape from Tarkov and VR, not much more to say about it. Gear up, go out into the world, loot what you can, maybe complete the trader quest or two and try to make it out alive or you'll lose everything you brought with you. This month on February 8th, Ghosts of Tabor graduates from the app lab to the main quest store. On Steam the game will still remain in early access though until later this year. Development is not concluded, there are things to come for Ghosts of Tabor. Also no date on the PSVR 2 version yet, might come together with a full release on Steam, maybe? Legendary Tales is a dungeon crawler RPG with a strong mixture of physics and stat based combat. Delve down into the dungeon alone or an up to 4 player co-op. The game has Diablo style itemization, character progression in form of attributes and skill trees and a wide range of weapons or spells to wield. Legendary Tales is in Steam early access since 2021 and is quite beloved by more than a few supporters. Lately it's gotten very silent though due to troubles with engine upgrades but that long period of content drought is now over. Legendary Tales will leave early access with a chunky 1.0 patch which adds a ton of new content also on February 8th. Busy day that's the fourth February 8th release on the list. Together with the full release on Steam the game will also come to the PSVR 2 and it gets a hefty price hike to $55. That was not a good call that's way too expensive. At that price point you'll be competing with AAA titles and you'll lose that competition. Titanic, a space between, is a time travel mystery horror adventure set on board of the Titanic at a very inconvenient moment, right when the ship is about to vanish beneath the waves. Sent back in time to uncover the fate of a traveler that disappeared under mysterious circumstances, you'll not only have to fight the rising water, but also the horrors that the travesty of time travel itself unleashed upon the world. You'll have to solve countless puzzles and manipulate your environment to escape the rising water. The game uses a weighted physics system, whatever that is supposed to mean. Titanic, a space between, sinks to the quest on February 14th. A Steam and a PSVR 2 release are teased for later this year. Hell, Marvin, I'm gonna die here! You screwed me! In 
2022, Whale was hyped up as the one up and coming competitive VR shooter. When it finally released into Steam Early Access, the reception was a bit muted. Not bad, but definitely not a game changer for VR. The developer Alex Lab then went on to make some very questionable decisions. They promised their beta testers to get access to the full game after release, which they promptly walked back upon, thus pissing off their most loyal supporters. Later, they tried to push some NFT bullshit. I don't have to tell you how that went. But the game still exists, it's trucking along, albeit with very low player counts, so I'll give the devs at least kudos for supporting it through the early access phase. On February 15th, the game gets its full release on Steam and on the Quest. The 1.0 patch will include a quick play options, a progression system, you now have to unlock guns, a couple of new weapons and two new maps. On Steam, the new patch is already live, so the full release will be more of a formality. Your name is Luca. You live on the second floor. Oh, wait, I don't know where you live actually. But you are forced by a sinister demon called Medicine to complete an ancient dark ritual. That is a premise for Medicine, a first person horror game created by a very small team that released to general critical acclaim as a flat game in 2022. A major part of the gameplay involves a Polaroid camera which serves as a bridge into the world of the dead and is used by the player to solve puzzles, find secrets or drive away demons. According to the studio, bringing the game to VR was planned since development started in 2016. Apparently shaking your Polaroid is very satisfying with motion controls. Medicine VR created in-house by Blood Games is slated for a release on Steam and the PSVR 2 on February 20th. My dearest Madeline, by now you will have learned that my ship, the HMS Amethea, did not reach its destination. We encountered turbulent seas and a mighty storm brought her down, myself being the sole survivor. A lone survivor of a shipwreck, stranded on a desert island. This sounds like a premise to a box standard survival game like Stranded Deep, but Bootstrap Island is not that game. Instead, it is a hardcore survival roguelike. You will be on your own, you will have to figure stuff out on your own, you will die and when you do, you will have to start from scratch. But maybe this time you learn something new that will increase your chances to make it just a little bit longer on your next run. I played a demo for this one in December and while that was fairly light on content, I was impressed by the highly immersive VR mechanics. The developers know how to make seemingly simple interactions into something special in VR. Never before has opening a coconut to get to that sweet and so refreshing milk in its innards such a satisfying experience. Bootstrap Island launches into Steam Early Access on February 22nd. It's early access so don't expect a finished product, but the core mechanics should be in the game. I wish you a full and happy life. You shall forever be imprinted in my heart of hearts. This mystifying story unfolded many moons ago. As the elder of two brothers, it was to be your destiny to inherit the throne to the kingdom. But out of jealousy or spite, your younger sibling framed you for your father's death and you had to flee deep into the woods. There you encountered and learned from the woodland spirits. With their help, it is your task to reclaim what was rightfully yours. This is a tactical RPG adventure. You will summon minions via cards that rest on your left arm to fight for your cause. Your right arm is imbued with powerful magic you can wield to aid your minions and battle. Rock and Roots is scheduled for release on February 28th on Steam and The Quest. Eleven games we had on the list this month. There are more games coming, there are always more. I had quite a few this month that did not make the list, but these are the 11 that seemed most promising or at least worth talking about. Leave a like if you enjoyed my puns or if you at least managed to endure them, that's, that's good enough. I'll see you in March or sooner with some other stuff here on the channel. Tschüss.